In fact, I believe she slipped the S stupid word in there. You're not going to really do that. That is stupid. Now, naturally, men, what do you do? You see, despite being a beautiful, gorgeous day, the sirens were going off, which was meaning a tornado warning. It's been, or a tornado has been spotted. There's tornado warnings up. Well, I proceeded to go along with my plans. I mean, after all, how many times have I heard this? I mean, I have literally grilled out outside while sirens are going off. I know it ain't that smart now, but anyway. But I have, you know, I mean, I've heard it over and over and over again, and I just kind of ignored the warning. Well, as we got halfway, it was about a mile, I was walking the dogs, and as, we, as I was walking the dogs about halfway around, the mile, and I, uh, the, the sirens just it started one after another. But still, yeah, it was it was just a beautiful day. I mean, you could have you wouldn't even have guessed that a tornado was anywhere around. Well, I made it home and all like that, got inside, and I would say within the hour, a tornado actually flew or went over our place of residence and went to the heart of the city of Prattville and tore up. A lot of things. In fact, it caused much destruction to the heart of our city here. People begin to live in fear. I mean, after all, you think about it. I mean, you almost died in a tornado. And they, and they experienced that, maybe that feeling of death. Or, or losing their homes. Or losing their business. Or even both. And you look around and there's just so much debris and houses and roofs and, 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 and storage buildings and restaurants and, and, and just all sorts. Even Walmart got hit. Just so much destruction that people started living in fear. Not just because of the tornado, but because of the damage and because of how their life was going to change. I mean, how am I going to get through this? I mean, what do I do now? And how do I protect the stuff that that is that I can still maintain? How can, how can I protect that but yet go live someplace else? Where else am I going to live? I've got to get all the insurance. And, and, and then all this, just one thing after another, how am I going to make it? Because I've got to adjust to a, a different way of living. You see, in the Scriptures here, what we just read, the Bible says in verse uh, 35 to 37, or actually verse 35 to 36, that they were taking a journey to the other side. They was on one side of the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was preaching and teaching and doing His normal stuff, healing. Then all of a sudden, they got in the ship, and they were going to the other side. And as they were going to the other side, understand something. When they got into the ship, it was calm. It was calm. Nothing was wrong. Beautiful day. Everything was okay. Let's get in the ship. They're just, they're just traveling along, telling jokes, doing whatever, laughing, crying, praying, doing whatever, relaxing, chilling out. And everything was fine until verse 37. And notice it says, there arose not a storm, but a what? Great. Everybody say great. Great, great storm. Now listen carefully. And you need to really, really capture this. In your life, you may be right now going through a period of what we'll call calmness. Yeah, yeah, there's some minor upsets and setbacks and little things that you're going through that you don't like. But for the most part, your life is calm. Trust me on this. A storm is heading your way. A storm is coming. Understand that the sirens are going off. So what, what, what do you mean? Well, according to the Bible, it says storms are going to come. And the first thing that we need to understand is storms will come. Storms are going to come in your life. Storms are going to come in my life. And we're going to go through a period of calmness. But we're going to also go through a period of storms. Amen. Now these storms can happen anywhere. They can be job related. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, who would have ever dreamed that we would be in such a recession that we're in today? Who would have ever dream that, that people would be losing their jobs like they are and all of this? You know, and, and then maybe years ago, you, you never thought that you would have the money crunch or, or, or money-related issues 
Or maybe it's family related issues that, that you're going through. There's some sickness or maybe some ill will feelings in the family. Or maybe it's something physically. But either way, there's storms that's coming in our lives. Well, here are the disciples. They're in a state of panic. I mean, they, they are literally, there's a great storm. And the way the Bible describes it, a great storm means huge, humongous, big. And, and, the, and the, that word, that word great is in there for a reason because they, they want to put much emphasis on, on that storm, on that tornado, on that hurricane. Uh, they, they want to put great. He's just big, massive. And it says that the waves were beating up against the ship. Now, remember, here you're in the boat and you're, and you're going down and, and it just everything's calm. But all of a sudden, just waves are just massive and, and they're beating up against the ship. And water is starting to fill up the ship. And all of a sudden, the disciples are looking at one another and they begin to panic. And then, they do the normal thing. They go and see Jesus. And notice the response from the disciples. He said, Jesus, don't you care? We're fixing to die. Now keep in mind, this was Jesus' buddies here. This was His crew, the disciples. I mean, they've seen the miracles. They've seen many things that Jesus had done. And here they say, Jesus, wake up. Here you are asleep. Get up. We're fixing to die. Don't you care? You know, we know that the storms are coming. The Bible teaches that. The Bible says that you will suffer tribulations. We will go through trials. And we named off several things or several ways that storms can hit our life. So the question is, if storms will come, how do we handle it? What do we do? Let me, real quick, like... Still talking about the storms will come. Let me give you three ways, three things that we need to think about when the storms come. Okay? Three things we need to do. Number one, don't give up. You see, storms come for one or two reasons. One is a warning. One is something maybe there's sin in your life. Maybe you're not living right. Maybe there's something you're doing you should not be doing. Maybe there's something that you ought to be doing that you're not doing. But a storm can come in your life and, and it's a warning sign from God saying, hey, clear this up. At the same time, a storm can come as a test. Anybody ever been watching TV and all of a sudden, ar, 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 this is a test. Ar. That annoying sound. It's only a test. Ar. Well, sometimes it's a test. Just like Job. Job was one of the most complete Sacrificial, greatest servants in the Bible. Job was a holy man of God. And God let His whole empire come down. From His material things, to His children, and to everything else. He just lost everything to His health. Of course, later on, God restored things to Him. But Job, it wasn't a warning sign because of something wrong in Job's life. It was just a test. And one thing that you've got to understand, as we go through this, whether it's a warning sign or whether it's a test, don't give up. Amen. The storms will come. So when the storms come, what do you do? One, don't give up. Number two, stay focused. Stay focused. Don't give Satan his day in the sunshine. Don't allow Satan to have his way with you. If you're here this morning and you're saved, understand that it's very important that you learn about the love and the judgments and, and, and everything you can about God. But at the same time, you better learn who Satan is. You better learn who the deceiver is, the liar, the father of all lies, the cunning, crafty person that they call Satan, Lucifer, the devil, a roaring lion. You need to understand because his goal in life is to discourage every born again believer. His goal in life is to, to, to make a Christian or make a believer so discouraged and feel so defeated. Do not give him his day in the sunshine. So what do you do when the storms come? Number one, don't give up. Number two, stay focused. And then number three, keep the faith. 
Keep the faith. It's not going to last. Understand that. When I say keep the faith, the storm is not going to last. In fact, that brings us up to our second point. Number one, the storms will come. And number two, the storms will cease. If you would, look at verse number 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. See that word great again? Here you see one time it says there was a massive storm. Now there's a massive calmness. You see, storms are going to come in our life, but you need to understand, storms will cease. They'll go away. This past winter, it was extremely cold here in the state of Alabama. I don't know if y'all remember, but we set record temperatures for low. It was like over 40 or 50 straight days with temperatures below freezing at night. It was just unbelievable. And in the, in, in the daytime, it wasn't getting much warmer. Now you probably don't remember this because this past summer and currently, we are extremely in a, a warm or hot condition. And plus, the lack of rain doesn't help matters. But let me tell you something. That cold winter passed by. This hot summer will pass by. Rain will come. The tornado that hit several years ago in the heart of this great city had passed by. You see, the storms that you're going through or the storms that you will be going through will eventually pass. Amen. 